Medardo Leon, better known by his ring name Bad Boy Ricky Lawless, made a significant impact on the professional wrestling scene during the early to mid-1980s. Competing in various eastern, mid-Atlantic, and southern regional territories, Lawless became a well-respected veteran of international championship wrestling and the National Wrestling Federation. Beyond his in-ring career, Lawless also left a lasting legacy as a trainer. He owned a wrestling school that produced some notable talents in the industry. Among his students were Steve the Brawler Lawler, Playboy Bobby Starr, Axel Rotten, and Joey Maggs. These individuals went on to make their own marks in professional wrestling. Lawless's influence extended beyond training as he formed successful tag teams with some of his protégés. Teaming up with Joey Maggs as the heavy metal connection, they achieved great success by capturing tag team titles not once, but twice. On November 30th, 1988, tragedy struck the wrestling world when Lawless was found shot to death. The circumstances surrounding his untimely demise were both shocking and heartbreaking. It was eventually revealed that Raymond Michael Swartz, the husband of the woman Lawless had reportedly had an affair with, was responsible for pulling the trigger. This incident gained significant notoriety in the May 1991 Hustler article titled Shotgun Justice, A Pro Wrestler's Final Fall. The article shed light on the details of Lawless's murder and brought attention to the dark side of professional wrestling. Neil Allen Karakofe, widely recognized as Neil Superior in the wrestling world, left his mark on the East Coast and Mid-Atlantic independent circuit during the 1990s. As a professional wrestler and trainer, he showcased his skills and captivated audiences with his charismatic persona. One of Neil Superior's notable achievements was his five-year reign as the NWL heavyweight champion, which remains unmatched in the promotion's history. This impressive feat solidified his status as a dominant force within the ring. Furthermore, Neil Superior was also part of a formidable tag team known as the Brothers Superior. Alongside Doug Superior, they became the inaugural co-holders of the NWL Tag Team Championship. Together, they displayed exceptional teamwork and brought excitement to fans everywhere. On August 23, 1996, Neil Superior's life took a tragic turn during an altercation with Ocean City police officers. According to the police, they used pepper spray and nightsticks during the confrontation until Superior was eventually handcuffed. However, at some point, the officers discovered that he had stopped breathing. Sadly, Superior passed away on that same day. This incident sparked outrage and led to a wrongful death lawsuit against the city. The circumstances surrounding Neil Superior's untimely demise raise questions about the use of force by law enforcement and the need for accountability in such cases. Frank Donald Goodish, better known by his ring name Bruiser Brody, was a legendary figure in the world of professional wrestling. Known for his hardcore brawling style, Brody's matches often left participants bloodied and audiences on the edge of their seats. Throughout his career, Brody became synonymous with an intense and gritty wrestling style that captivated fans around the world. While he may have had short runs in North American promotions due to his intolerance for underhanded tactics by wrestling promoters, he found great success in Japan where he enjoyed lengthy and prosperous runs. In recognition of his contributions to the sport, Brody was posthumously inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2019. The death of professional wrestler Brody in 1988 remains a controversial and tragic event. Brody, whose real name was Frank Goodish, lost his life from stab wounds sustained backstage during a wrestling event in Puerto Rico. The man responsible for the attack was Jose Gonzalez, also known as Invader One. The trial that followed Gonzalez's actions resulted in his acquittal on the grounds of self-defense. However, there are claims that two key witnesses who could have potentially influenced the outcome were not properly summoned to testify until after the trial had concluded. At the time of his death, Bruiser Brody was only 42 years old. This untimely loss shook the wrestling community and left a lasting impact on those who knew him. The circumstances surrounding his death and the subsequent legal proceedings continue to be subjects of discussion and debate among fans and industry insiders alike. 
Nancy Benoit, also known as Woman, made a significant impact in the world of professional wrestling. She showcased her talent and versatility in various promotions, such as Florida Championship Wrestling, Extreme Championship Wrestling, and World Championship Wrestling, WCW. However, it was her role as woman in WCW that truly made her a star. On November 23, 2000, Nancy married fellow wrestler Chris Benoit. This union not only brought them together as partners, but also created a dynamic duo within the wrestling industry. On June 25, 2007, a tragic incident occurred in suburban Atlanta that shook the community. Nancy Benoit, her husband Chris, and their son Daniel were found dead in their home. It was a devastating discovery that left many questions unanswered. Investigators worked tirelessly to piece together the events leading up to this heartbreaking incident. Their findings revealed that Nancy had been killed three days prior to the discovery of her body on June 22, 2007. The cause of her death was determined to be strangulation with an extension cord. It was determined that Chris Benoit tragically took the life of his own son while he slept. Then, after committing these unthinkable acts, Chris Benoit took his own life. The reasons behind these actions may never be fully understood. In the aftermath of these tragic events, the wrestling community and fans were shocked. It became clear that there were underlying marriage problems within the family. This heartbreaking incident serves as a reminder of the complexities and fragilities within relationships and families. It is an unfortunate example of how unresolved issues can escalate to such devastating outcomes. Stephen James Bisson, better known by his ring name Steve Bradley, was a prominent figure in the world of professional wrestling. At the young age of 15, Bradley made his debut in 1991 and quickly became a mainstay in various East Coast promotions throughout the 1990s. However, Bradley's career reached new heights when he joined WWE World Wrestling Entertainment, spending over three years showcasing his skills and entertaining audiences worldwide. Aside from his success as a wrestler, Bradley also made significant contributions to the wrestling industry as the owner and head trainer at the Wrestling Federation of America. In a tragic turn of events, Bradley's life came to an untimely end on December 4, 2008. His body was discovered in a parking lot in Manchester, New Hampshire. The medical examiner said the cause of death was inconclusive, leaving many questions unanswered. Adding to the mystery surrounding Bradley's demise, it is worth noting that he had been indicted on drug possession charges just one month prior to his passing. This detail raises speculation about possible connections between his legal troubles and the circumstances surrounding his death. Interestingly, Bradley's name found its way into the spotlight when professional wrestler Kurt Angle mentioned him in his WWE Hall of Fame speech. Angle referred to Bradley as an unsung hero and expressed gratitude for their relationship. While rumors circulated that foul play may have been involved in Bradley's death, no concrete evidence has emerged to confirm or dispel these speculations. The circumstances surrounding this unfortunate event continue to captivate attention and leave room for interpretation. If you're not familiar with the tragedies of the Von Erichs wrestling family, let me give you a brief overview. Despite their talent and popularity among fans, the Von Erichs sons who followed in their father Fritz Von Erichs footsteps have faced numerous unfortunate events. It almost seems as if there is a curse surrounding this veteran line of professional wrestlers. Starting with the eldest son, Jack, who tragically lost his life at just six years old after being knocked unconscious by an electrical shock and drowning in a puddle. Then David Von Erich, also known as the Yellow Rose of Texas. Just six years after the devastating loss of his infant daughter, David was found dead in Tokyo, Japan. The circumstances surrounding his death pointed to a drug overdose that was allegedly covered up by his colleague, Bruiser Brody. Then, in a series of heartbreaking events, the next three brothers, Carrie, Mike, and Chris, all met tragic ends. Chris and Carrie shot themselves while Mike succumbed to an overdose of tranquilizers. The sheer magnitude of these unfortunate incidents is staggering and has led many to believe that a dark cloud hangs over this family. These events serve as a reminder that even those who appear to have it all can still face 
unimaginable hardships. The story of the Von Erichs is one that highlights the darker side of fame and success in the world of professional wrestling. All right, let's talk about the legendary macho man, Randy Savage. Known for his larger-than-life persona and incredible wrestling skills, Savage had an incredible career that spanned an impressive 32 years. He held six world championship reigns throughout his time in the ring, including two as the WWF World Heavyweight Champion and four as the WCW World Heavyweight Champion. Savage's impact on professional wrestling cannot be overstated. He was hailed as one of the greatest pro wrestlers ever, and rightfully so. His charismatic personality, unique style, and memorable catchphrases made him a fan favorite. Whether he was flying off the top rope or delivering his signature elbow drop, Savage always left a lasting impression on audiences around the world. So let's raise a metaphorical elbow drop to Macho Man Randy Savage and his incredible legacy in professional wrestling. On the morning of May 20th, 2011, tragedy struck when Savage was driving his Jeep Wrangler near his home in Seminole, Florida. Unfortunately, he became unresponsive and crashed into a tree. It's a heartbreaking incident that took his life at the age of 58. Thankfully, his wife only suffered minor injuries. Following the accident, an autopsy performed by the medical examiner's office revealed that Savage had an enlarged heart and advanced coronary artery disease. This unfortunate combination resulted in a sudden heart attack, ultimately leading to the fatal crash. In accordance with his wishes, Savage was cremated after his passing. His ashes were then placed under his favorite tree as a final resting place. All right, let's dive into the fascinating career of Adolfo Bresciano, or as many wrestling fans know him, Dino Bravo. Back in the 1970s, Bravo kick-started his journey in the wrestling world in Montreal. Little did he know that this would be the beginning of an incredible rise to stardom. Known for his incredible strength and charisma, Bravo quickly climbed the ranks and became one of Canada's top professional wrestling stars. He achieved numerous feats along the way, including an impressive six-time reign as the Canadian International Heavyweight Champion. Talk about dominance. But Bravo's journey didn't stop there. He later caught the attention of the Worldwide Wrestling Federation, now known as WWE, where he teamed up with Dominic DiNucci to form a formidable partnership. Together, they achieved greatness by winning the prestigious World Tag Team Championship. Tragically, Bravo's life would end soon. On March 10, 1993, a tragic incident occurred that shook the community. Bravo, at the age of 44, was found shot dead in his own home in Vimont, Laval, Quebec. The brutality of the crime was evident as he had been hit by a staggering 11 bullets to his head and torso. The circumstance surrounding his death are shrouded in mystery and speculation. It is widely believed that his alleged involvement in illegal cigarette smuggling may have played a significant role in his untimely demise. However, despite police investigations and efforts to uncover the truth, his murder remains unsolved to this day. Owen Hart, a cherished member of the legendary Hart family wrestling dynasty, left an indelible mark on the world of professional wrestling. As the youngest sibling among his seven wrestling brothers, Owen not only held his own, but soared to great heights in his career. With numerous accolades to his name, Owen was a force to be reckoned with in the ring. He claimed the title of one-time USWA Unified World Heavyweight Champion and held the prestigious WWF Intercontinental Championship twice. Additionally, he proudly donned the crown as the 1994 WWF King of the Ring. Owen's success extended beyond individual achievements. He proved himself as a formidable tag team wrestler, capturing the World Tag Team Championship four times alongside various partners. His star power helped him headline multiple pay-per-view events for the WWF. Not only was Owen a champion in terms of titles won, but he was also widely regarded as one of the company's best in-ring performers. His agility, technical prowess, and captivating charisma made him a fan favorite, but a tragic accident would soon claim his life. On May 23, 1999, tragedy struck the world of professional wrestling during a live WWF pay-per-view event called Over the Edge. 
Owen Hart was set to make a dramatic entrance by flying from the top of the Kemper Arena in Kansas City. However, something went horribly wrong. As Hart prepared for his descent, the harness he was wearing malfunctioned. A clasp gave way, and he plummeted 70 feet onto the ring ropes below. The impact was devastating and tragically severed his aorta, causing him to lose his life almost instantly. While this horrific incident did not make it to air, the audience of 16,000 people in attendance witnessed this heart-wrenching accident unfold before their eyes. The shock and sense of loss reverberated throughout both the wrestling community and fans worldwide. In the aftermath of this tragic mishap, Owen Hart's wife and children took legal action against the WWF, now WWE, seeking justice for their devastating loss. Eventually, they received an $18 million settlement as a result of their lawsuit. 